a new challenger approaches in the Batman vs Superman figures and it feels like this one will truly make the competition bleed. A Chinese company by the name of Fonjoy has recently been doing an awful lot of the Justice League or rather the Snyderverse DC figures prior to the revamp under the guise of James Gunn. And there's a really weird company because it looks like for some time they technically weren't all that well licensed and I really couldn't find too much background information on the company. Every time I typed in Fonjoy, Fonjoy Company, Fonjoy to Toy Company, Fonjoy Company information, I would either be greeted by listings of not only this guy but also the prior DC Justice League figures, but also one specific listing that is not necessarily safe for a YouTube video to describe. <laughs> Goddamn. So frankly, if anybody can kind of post in the comment section below if they have any kind of inside knowledge as to what Fonjoy is, how long they've been around for, what their background information is, what their history is with action figures, and why it is that now finally with their BVS Batfleck here, they finally hit it out of the park. Because I gotta be honest, an awful lot of their figures, parts of this guy, look downright awful. I think the only one that is kind of passable would be the Henry Cavill Justice League Superman. But prior to that, their Wonder Woman, their Cyborg, and God forbid their Dark Knight Trilogy Batman and Joker. They, they look god awful. They look atrocious. But it was a recent, I think it was a Reddit post, they said that they were technically unlicensed at the time and that's why they look the way that they do. And it was finally with this Ben Affleck Batman from BBS that they were finally able to acquire the licensing and were able to hone in on a very good likeness and actually really accurate portrayal of the suit while at the same time being able to perfect all the things that they could for the ultimate, as they call it, one ninth scale figure that you see before you're here. And this is also my first foray into Fonjoy to see exactly what it is that they can bring to the table as far as not only DC figures as a whole, but also what they are now serving up on a silver plate with their interpretation of a bat fleck. And holy Moses, they make a very strong first impression. Even before we get to the figure itself, that box that this guy came in is premium quality. It's got a magnet attached to the lid, the front, and the actual feel of the cardboard outside of the box is very nice, very high quality. You have some really good artwork with Ben Affleck's Batman there. Don't know how I feel about the logo emulating that of the 89 Keaton Batman logo, but it's just for the nameplate. Uh, beyond that, you have the actual logo of the BBS movie, along with some really good artwork on the side. On the back, you got some promo shots. You can see right there the Chinese lettering at the bottom. But once you open up the lid and actually get to unboxing the figure, everything is treated very nice and high quality. The way that he's kind of sandwiched in there, granted, it's just plastic, a plastic casing. It would have been nice if it was like a foam kind of feel or like a felt insert inside that was holding the figure in place. But anyways, once you get that out of the way, Everything is very nicely coated in there, very a la Mayfix or ASH Figure Arts. And you can bet your ass that I was smiling as soon as I held it in hand because the quality, the weight, the heft is most certainly right there. And trust me, I was very, very dubious for a company like Fonjoy because I never really heard of them too, too much until they made a splash with their announcement of this BVS Batman then I started to see some of the promo shots and I was right there with an awful lot of people saying that this was honestly looking a little too good to be true, especially when you take the pricing into account. On average, especially if you're importing over from China, you have some sites that are listing it for about 40, 45 bucks, maybe even 50 to 60, somewhere around right there. And then some eBay resellers, which is unfortunately the way that I was able to kind of go through in order to be able to get this guy as quickly as possible, listing it for about 60 to 65. So nothing too crazy as far as the skyrocketed price but then you take the shipping into account which of course with imports uh, import services and things like that you're kind of marking it up to an extra 20 25 dollars i gotta be honest i'm a huge fan of the bvs suit sure you can say so many different things about the movie about ben affleck's portrayal but to me i've always appreciated the very I don't want to say super realistic because there's areas where you can tell that they kind of punched up the suit as far as muscular is concerned to make him look a little bit more animalistic and larger than life. But at the same time, 
it's very different than what we've ever gotten before, while at the same time taking inspiration from one of the strongest portrayals of Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. So the very gaudy bat symbol, the gray mixed with the black, the very skin-like texture to the front of the suit, it's all really well done here by Fondue in a way that I was just blazingly surprised. But trust me, I was still kind of under the impression that I really don't want to feel like moving this guy around or feeling it in hand is going to come apart on me because... I remember, apart from certain sites listing the Fun Joy prototype here, there were also some listings from like AliExpress, and AliExpress is knockoff central. So I was like, all right, I'm hoping that Fun Joy is not some kind of front, it's not some kind of scam company out there pretending to be putting out these licensed uh, figures, or at least pretending that they're even licensed to begin with. But based on some of the stickerage that's happening on the front of the box, along with some in light information that I was able to find online, they are in fact li uh, licensed. And that was the only way to get all of the little details really well done here with this figure because you can see that the paint application the texturing it's all pretty much right there man i just i really can't get over the fact that they were able to get the quality of the plastic and the details on the suit i want to say about 85 to 90 percent you'll notice why it's off by about that 10 percent but to me one of my favorite areas would have to be pretty much anywhere that they were able to really nail that gold plating happening along the utility belt a little bit on the gauntlets definitely on the knuckles as well as the toes on the boots themselves but then you have even like this kevlar-esque looking texture to the boots every time i look at the legs these are probably my favorite areas of the overall body it's got to be the legs the musculature behind the thighs along with the actual like i said texturing and the stitching of that skin-like suit it's just man mwah, chef's kiss and i was like pretty impressed i was very happy to see that fonjoy was really nailing it out of the park they were all the way doing really really well especially when it comes to the buffness of the biceps the shoulders like i said the gauntlets retaining that kevlar look making the suit really come alive up until we get to the torso area where it's still really good as far as texturing is concerned but i do think that the abdomen is sculpted and shaped in a very weird manner specifically with this little stitching this kind of paneling happening right here in kind of like a quadrant sort of pattern and the reason for why i think that's kind of weird is because that wasn't very predominant in the original bvs suit so i feel like if maybe they have gotten rid of these little four squares and just had the musculature behind the abdomen kind of speak for itself it would have been 100 percent uh, it really not only accurate but it really would have gotten the job done of really representing this torso area much better and maybe even would have distracted me from the little detail that made me feel like something was off when it came to this bat symbol because one of my favorite things about the bvs suit is the very huge very like i said animalistic and girthy bat symbol the very thick ass bat symbol there on the chest and for the most part it looks pretty decent up until I, like I said, I couldn't fight this feeling that something was a little off. And then finally, as I looked a little closer, I noticed that, yeah, these little lines, these little like panels that are kind of separating the wings from the center portion of the bat symbol, they're not supposed to be there. And that's what made me realize, guys, what the hell? You were almost there. This is effectively where that 10% of accuracy kind of falters. This is the Justice League bat symbol specifically not the bvs one the bvs one retains this exact shape but it's all one giant piece with a little bit of scraping and and kind of scratches to make it look a little battle damage and ward torn here it's not only very clean without any kind of scratches or battle damage but you have those panels and specifically that means that this is the justice league symbol planted on the bvs suit and that kind of triggers my OCD a little bit when it comes to Batman figure collecting. Granted, it could probably be a foreshadowment of things to come, considering that this is not going to be their only Batfleck figure coming up here in the very near future. They got some prototypes working down the pipeline, and it looks like one of them is going to... Actually, two of them. One of them is going to be the Nightmare Batman from the Nightmare sequence in BVS, but then the other is going to be an appropriate, accurate Justice League Bat flag from the 2017-2021 Snyder Cut version. And once we get to that, then wouldn't it be ironic if they end up using the BVS symbol on that one? Oh, man. that they, they 
I, I, that would be funny if they would troll with us like that. Now, thankfully, that is where the inaccuracies, at least for me, kind of stop. Because once you navigate up here, god damn, look at that likeness. This is where I'm most definitely thankful for the likeness and for the actual licensing to come through for Fonjoy and for them to have acquired it. Because I could not have lived with myself if I had put the money down for this guy, especially through some form of pre-order. And then the likeness would have looked like the one on the bail Batman did. Because that bail Batman, every time I see pictures of that, that's what kind of stops me from wanting to pick it up and do like a comparison video or anything like that. Because it just looks immensely off to me. Let alone that Heath Ledger Joker. Jesus Christ. But when I saw pictures of this guy, I was right there with an awful lot of other people. It looked too good to be true. So imagine how much I was smiling when I pulled him out of the box and I saw this likeness. There's that Ben Affleck chin. There are the lips, or rather lack thereof, because the guy doesn't necessarily have all that much lip lippage going on. But then you get to this head sculpt that is just so really well etched out you have this matte finish this very skin like matte finish with the short ears the very girthy head the eyebrows to make it look like i said animalistic which is exactly what they were going for everything is pretty much top notch as far as this head sculpt it is immaculate granted the eyes could have been just a smudge better it looks like for the most part they look pretty good but there are certain angles where it looks like one is looking just I want to say a fraction of a degree different than the other, so they're not looking straight ahead. They could have been done a little bit better, but for the most part, you have a really good-looking expression right there for a bat flick. My only criticism would have to be that maybe the neck could have been elongated just a little bit better, despite having some good sculpture work happening on the cowl and the shoulder piece here. It could have been a little longer upside, because... As you can kind of see right here, one of the things that was a little detrimental to not just this bat flip figure, but I feel like almost every bat flip figure, they have never been able to perfect the neck. Hell, I would say that there's certain Hot Toys figures out there where the neck is a little strange. I want to say the initial BBS uh, Hot Toys Batman figure, it, that neck was always going to be a problem. Even if it looks good from like a neutral position, once you get to actually articulating it or moving it around or swapping the heads, etc., there's always going to be some sort of problem. And it looks like Fonjoy was not necessarily... Uh, absconded from that kind of situation because there's certain angles where he looks good and then there's other angles where he looks like some other people have mentioned in some comment section and some reddit pages he looks a little neanderthalic yeah <laughs> like a caveman type of look and ever so often i would make the argument that that is initially what they strive to do to make him look very animalistic very brutish but then there's others where I'm like, yeah, he looks a little stubby. He could have used a, a, like an extra, hell, not even a centimeter, maybe even like a millimeter extra on that next stump to make him look a little bit more realistic and a bit more proportionate. Because ever so often, when you kind of move the very enlarged cape, which overall looks nice as far as delivering on this pleathery kind of look on the outside and the nylon look on the inside, it is a little long, overly long. I feel like they could have stitched it up a little bit better. And there technically are wires on the rims, on the outside portions here of the cape itself for you to be able to sculpt and mess around with and kind of position the cape in a specific area. But the wires themselves are not exactly that strong. Recently, I covered the first appearance Batman by McFarlane. And I feel like those wires are technically a lot stronger than whatever it is that Fonjoy delivered on right here. But once you're able to kind of futz and finesse the cape into an area that looks accurate to that of the movie, you're technically then able to kind of sculpt the cape in a way to kind of mask a little bit of that brutishness happening around the shoulder area and even a little bit around the torso area where it looks a little uh, planky, if that's even a word. It, it, there's areas where when you look at the abdomen from head on, it looks just fine, but then when you kind of start rotating it to the side, it looks like it's one giant kind of like board piece that's like this big. That's very wide and delivers on an awful lot of the sculpting and the texture. But once you kind of look at it from this angle, you'll see right there that he looks a little bit planky. I don't know. That's the best word that I can use to kind of describe exactly how wide and how uh, washboard he looks like and I know that back in the day that used to be a huge compliment for dudes with washboard abs but here he took that just uh, Fonjoy took that and a little too literally when it came to 
kind of masking out the proportions right here. So it looks like you'll be relying a little bit on the cape to be able to kind of mask that a little bit and really deliver on a little bit of the accuracies as far as portrayal of this this Fonjoy Batman. So not necessarily the most perfect representation, but god damn, we come immensely close when it comes to the actual detailing and likeness of the face sculpt, the detail on the actual suit itself. And yes, they even nailed the articulation. Uh, again, for the most part, I want to say about 90% there, much like the accuracies to the bat symbol and the abdomen, the articulation is also almost just there. Almost just there. God damn it. But here's the thing. That first faltering of the articulation actually starts with the head itself. It's definitely able to rotate all the way around 360, and it looks up very nicely and even tilts side to side pretty generously, especially for a bat flick figure. But when it comes to actually bending it downwards, especially to deliver on that very brooding position that he was uh, actually initially revealed back in the day when BBS was ab uh, about to come out and they revealed for the very first time Batfleck in the suit and he's looking down all menacingly or sadly because now he's stuck to those movies. <laughs> it's just like Ben Affleck sort of kind of regrets. You can't really do that position because that's kind of where it stops. You can only look straight forward instead of actually being able to look down so if you want to be able to deliver on that look i'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit here you have to rely on the torso and the waist that are definitely able to crunch inwards like so to deliver a little bit on that position and on that pose so abdominal crunch despite the fact that i was kind of criticizing like i said the planky look to the overall torso it's definitely able to favor an awful lot of torso and waist mobility there because you can obviously see a cut happening right here underneath the bat symbol that kind of anchors and kind of arches right here on top and even though because of the way that it's sculpted in that manner it's not able to really turn 360 degrees because of the way that the plastic is kind of interfering with itself it's definitely able to nudge a good amount left to right and the same thing could be said about the waist can kind of nudge left to right but eventually the, the the belt itself kind of comes into conflict with it a little bit but crunching and extending towards the back and even crunching a little bit on the obliques can most definitely happen so an awful lot of mobility happening there on the torso if you want to rely on that for that pose if you ever want to give him like i said a very brooding and animalistic look Going back to the arms, they can definitely move all the way around 360, though because of the way that they're sculpted, you're going to have to nudge them a little bit out of the way, especially with the cape kind of coming into conflict there. Extension, however, can most definitely happen via these joints right here and these hinges. And there's even a little bit of butterfly rotation. There's definitely a washer inside there and some butterfly movement, though it's not the most favorable one that I've ever seen on a BVS backflip figure before, but it is technically still there. Biceps can still rotate all the way around. They feel very good in hand. And even two joints at the elbows, though, because of the way that the bicep is just so goddamn huge and also how the gauntlets are sculpted, it can't really flex all the way up. I've, I think the, even the McFarlane is technically able to flex a little higher than even this can. However, when we get to the wrists and even the ankles, again, I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but I just really need to comment on this. They did something with the wrists and the ankles that either I have seen before, but not for a really long time, or I frankly never seen before. There's technically ball joints in there in a very traditional format. So the joint itself we've seen before. Nothing revolutionary there. But what they did, I don't know what it is that they did, but they did something with the way that the hands, or rather the feet, are sculpted with like some extra room inside of the cuff itself that... When it comes to rotation, obviously you can rotate the wrist 360 and you can bend the wrist inwards and outwards via the hinge inside of that ball joint. But there's something very flexible and very smooth about the way to be able to do so. And on the wrist, it feels pretty traditional. Nothing really crazy there. It's once we get to the ankles. Again, I'm kind of skipping ahead here because I really need to talk about it. They sculpted the boot the cuff around the shin and the shoe itself in a way where they were able to perfectly blend this joint in a way where it's like, yeah, it's your traditional ball joint, but the mobility you got is actually pretty crazy. You can definitely pivot the ankle down like so and incline it upwards like so and rotate it 360 degrees. However, the actual feeling you get when pivoting the ankle inwards and outwards like so 
it never feels like I'm coming into conflict. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no vertical cut where it's like, oh, I try to bend it this way, and it's going to stop because you obviously can't flex the joint like that. No, they did something that, I got to be honest, the last time I think I saw an ankle move in this kind of manner, it's pretty much a hot toys. So you have, and here's the thing, when it comes to a very bulky and top-heavy Batman like the Batfleck here, you definitely want to rely on ankles like these for stability, for posability. Because if you do not nail the ankles, you're going to have a huge headache trying to pose this guy in any kind of way. So trust me when I say that I'm pretty happy to see that they were able to get the ankles in a using some kind of, I don't want to say technology, but they just etched out the boot and the actual plastic inside of the shoe here to kind of just create some extra real estate to be able to flex the ankle in a way that I've never seen before on a figure of this scale. And I'm pretty happy. So I guess while I'm down here, I'll comment a little bit on the toesies. You can definitely flex them up right here. And they're actually pretty girthy. They're almost kind of halfway across the shoe. So you can definitely bend the toes a little higher than your average uh, figure right there. Two joints at the knees that are fully able to bend all the way up and feel pretty smooth. In fact, the smoothness and the mobility of said knee joints are pretty reminiscent of a Mafex. So I'll just mention that right there. Then we get to the top leg joints. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I'm kind of glad that I'm bringing up these specific joints for last. At the top of the legs, we got these dumbbell joints that allow the leg to fully bend almost all the way up, like you see before you right about there, and extend towards the back uh, pretty generously before it comes into conflict with the ass sculpt right there. So not much different there than your typical even McFarlane or Mar Hasbro Marvel Legends, etc., and extension towards the sides is actually really generous via those joints because you can actually flex it almost at the full 180. But notice what happens when you try to put it back in place. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at this atrocity. Look at this. Christ. There's one hidden ability that I did not know Batflex uh, Batman can really do here. So yeah, as you can see, the dumbbell joints inside here have major drop-off mechanics happening right here to the point where it's almost like the legs themselves separate from the entirety of the body. And yeah, you can definitely uh, understand that it looks ugly as f Like, oh my god, this is the ugliest thing that I've ever seen. Thankfully though, flexing and fitting the legs back into place via the drop-down joint can most definitely happen and it's actually pretty smooth to do so. I never really feel like it's sticky or it's coming into conflict with any pieces and most definitely unlike Mafex has been doing recently and never or figure arts for that matter it doesn't feel like it's getting sticky it doesn't feel like it's getting robust or it's getting stuck on me and I have to put some oil or soap in there some shock oil. I'm being giving no indications of that happening anytime soon so I'm pretty happy to see that the quality control for the most part are not only the joints the articulation overall and even the quality of the plastic the figure itself is really doing it for me and again thankful to those ankle joints for giving me some really good uh, posability and stability on the figure itself because it's very easy for this guy to be very top heavy specifically with this really girthy cape that again could have been a little better but overall just look at this guy I'm really, really happy. And if it couldn't get any better, you also got the accessories. Pretty standard issue for your traditional bat flick. He comes with five additional hands. Apart from the fisted hands that he comes on his person, you got two very open holding hands and then two very pinchy holding hands. And that's because he comes with the traditional grapple and two silver batarangs that are actually to scale and not only are well painted and well detailed, but... I think that's probably the most important part is that they're to scale. It doesn't look like they're oversized. It doesn't look like they're disproportionate. McFarlane, take the, take, the, take the hint there. But you can see right here that they even got the brown down right right here with the handle as well as the little circular piece right there that is supposed to be like the zip line as well as this extra piece on the other side, the piston looking piece here down at the bottom of the actual barrel. So overall, very happy with the way that the grapple came out as well as the paneling that's happening here on the batarangs themselves. Very well sculpted. I will say that maybe they're just a little oversized, but not like, not the way that McFarlane was doing with theirs. All right, these can definitely feel much more akin to this one-ninth scale Batman. And all of these gadgets 
fit, fit really well in either of these hands that you can definitely swap out for the fisted hands. Now, I will ad admit that the swapping process could be a little better. There are times where I did feel like I was about to break the actual peg inside of the wrist, so that could have been handled a little bit better. I would probably say that you can definitely take some kind of hair dryer or whatever, warm up the pieces so that you have an easier time than I did when swapping them out. And you wouldn't want to break any of these hands, especially when they come with a, um, a thumbs up hand. Yeah. Fun Joy went ahead and threw in a fifth hand for his right, and it's a thumbs up hand. I'm gotta be honest, I might have to rewatch BVS, but I do not remember him throwing a hand, a thumbs up, to any of the characters. I don't remember him doing that. Definitely to Superman and not to Wonder Woman. Granted, that movie's kind of a blur to me, but uh, yeah, that's kind of there. And if that wasn't weird enough, they threw in the breathalyzer, which is really well detailed and sculpted. You even have the bat symbol there on the front, like he likes to deck out all of his gadgets. However, that's not the weird part, because by itself, you could see that this gadget is pretty well detailed and sculpted, like I said. And swapping it out for the mouth plate is... For the most part, pretty straightforward. The only downside is that that initial mouth plate, the standard one, the unmasked one, is a little difficult to get out to the point where I actually started to chip a little bit of the paint on one side here trying to get it out. So do be careful when doing so because you're going to have to be either very delicate with the the piece itself or you're going to have to find some kind of prying tool but definitively one that is not overly sharp otherwise you can risk it removing any of the chip or any of the little bit of stubble paint apps that are happening there on his chin you can see that he's actually missing a little bit right there and I can't tell if he came like that or if I did that by proxy while trying to remove the faceplate right there to swap it out for the breathalyzer to see how it looks like and it looks pretty good when it's actually on his cowl the reason why I find it kind of weird it's because he didn't use this in BVS. Going back to the bat symbol that is lifted from Justice League, the breathalyzer was used in Suicide Squad, not in BVS. So it's almost like I'm starting to think that Fonjoy had a moment of crisis where they didn't think that they were going to be able to make more. Maybe the licensing was uh, timed or something. So they were like, oh, let's throw in the breathalyzer from Suicide Squad. Oh, let's do the bat symbol from Justice League because someone on the design team, one of the leads of the design team, liked it better than the BVS one. I'm starting to get that vibe. But I got to be honest, I can kind of bring myself to forgive all that if it means that they were really able to nail this unmasked Batfleck or Ben Affleck head sculpt. Now... A little bit of a disclaimer, not every single version of this Fonjoy Ben Affleck Batman will come with this head sculpt. I actually, frankly, lucked out by the eBay seller that tossed it in because it was actually packaged separately via this tiny little black box. And I noticed that it also had the Fonjoy logo on it, so I thought to myself, is, th is this what I think it is? Because there's certain versions, I think there's like a deluxe version that comes with this head sculpt, but the standard version will not come with it. So that's a huge disclaimer there. But if you do manage to acquire the Deluxe Edition, he comes with this Ben Affleck head sculpt along with a, a little neck piece right here to be able to kind of fit it inside, which unfortunately has kind of rubbed off a little bit of that black paint on the neck stump right here. But if you kind of position it carefully while doing the swapping out process, you will not be able to notice it. And swapping them out is actually not too bad of a process either. Fitting the hole or the neck stump right here into the peg inside is pretty straightforward. You have these two pegs on the collar piece to be able to lock down the cape, which is not I'll tell you this it's a much easier process than whatever the f they had going on with that Keaton figure arts remember that figure arts trying to swap out the unmasked for the, I don't even want to think about it I got some PTSD from that thing but once you swap them out oh my god I gotta be honest I feel like it's goddamn witchcraft that they were able to nail it in this scale sure there's areas where it looks a little caricature-ish, you know, like a 3D render, like his CG double that you have when visual effects are taking part inside of the movie itself. But look at this, man. Look at this head sculpt. That's Ben Affleck. You got the hair. You got the creases. Could have used a little bit of extra gray, a little bit of extra stubble, although the stubble in and of itself is not bad. It's articulated. It's able to actually move upwards and downwards actually downwards is not too great but upwards and then rotate it all the way around i am so ecstatic to have a very accurate head sculpt right there of ben affleck 
one eyed scale that just looks straight up like him that I there's times where I kind of catch myself just staring at it in awe going like yeah that's that's Ben Affleck right there and yeah if the if you can find the deluxe edition even if it's for like an extra 10 bucks or so if it means getting this accurate of a Ben Affleck head sculpt I would argue it's worth it but regardless of which version you get you also get a bonus display stand right here which is also really well done it's still just a hard plastic but you got the ba BVS symbol right there Batman nameplate on the front that it's a little cheap looking in terms of the font and the paint applications on it. But to me, what really, really did it for me is got to be this translucent plastic arm. This arm right here. It's super ratcheted on three points. Sometimes a little too ratcheted to a fault to where it feels like it could almost break. But the stability to be able to put them in a variety of poses. And beyond that, not only do you have this area right here towards the bottom where the base connects. To, once you fit it in place, it's able to rotate very smoothly. But, but... That's not all. That, what did it for me is the spring-loaded mechanism of these arms right here. Whenever I get one of these bases with these arms, with these kind of claws here at the top, they're generally just articulated pieces that just kind of move about and they're just loose. This one is actually spring-loaded. Dude, these pieces are spring-loaded, which means it's going to actually grip the figure in place and not let go. You have no idea how far this goes. For a figure, especially of the bulkiness and the weightiness of this BBS Batman, to be able to put him in specific poses, especially if you want to put him in a flying pose or like he's gliding or like he's going holding on to something like he does at, in the final battle of BBS. Jesus Christ, you can definitely tell that this thing is going to be a godsend. So, even though the base itself is nothing to really write home about, it's really this arm that really did it for me and made me go, yep, yeah, all this combined. For the pricing that you're putting down, Fonjoy definitely made a huge impression on me. But was that impression strong enough to make me forget about the Mafex and the McFarlane? Uh, almost. I want to say almost. Because if you look back at the channel, you'll notice that when this guy was released, uh, announced and released almost within the same block of time, I knew that I needed to make a form of comparison to the Mafex here because there, this is generally around the area before we start to get into some higher tier stuff like Hot Toys and whatever that is manageable for certain collectors to actually put down their money and go for a very accurate BBS figure. So you're dealing with 20 or so bucks, 22 maybe, 22.99. You got about 60-ish bucks if I was to average it out because, like I said, some sites sell it for about 40, 45 bucks, which is generally the MSRP, but then you're going to be adding another 20 to 25 if you're importing it over from China. So you're looking at about somewhere between 65 to maybe even 70, maybe even 80 if you go through a reseller like e eBay, someone on eBay. Then you got the Mafex. <laughs> the Mafex, which I believe MSRP for about the same as the Fonjoy here, about 60-ish or so. But as I mentioned in that comparison... You can see right here that Mafex is overdue for a 2.0. This is definitely a figure that I want to see them revisit, especially once they get past their Justice League, their Zack Snyder Justice League, which they got coming up here in a few months. That way we can then get something that looks like that Zack Snyder one while at the same time retaining the aesthetic qualities that I really like about the BVS suit because I mentioned in that comparison that they were able to get the color palette and the paint apps and the actual details behind the texturing a bit more accurate than the McFarlane. However, the McFarlane is cursed with this elongated nature of the sculpting, of the proportions, and then that likeness that is nowhere near that of Ben Affleck's. Even if the quality of the figure itself and the affordability that you have with this guy on top of the accessories, which are, again, very oversized, but at least they did manage to throw in two batterings, the grapple, the extra hands, you at least have some value packed in for just your average 20 to 22 bucks. But I do know that likenesses and accuracy are huge factors when it comes to McFarlane Collector. In fact, very make or break factors. And if you are in need of a McFarlane that is much more accurate to that Ben Affleck portrayal, you're going to have to fork over an extra few pennies for that Justice League 2021 tactical suit version released back in 2021 that has the much more accurate look to the to the chin, to the head sculpt, to everything. You're better off forking over that extra money to the Fonjoy especially since your options are kind of funneled down since that Mafex is in desperate need of that 2.0. So if you're comfortable with forking over an extra 40 to 45, 
This is what you get, which in my opinion is almost a shrunken down Ben Affleck Batman that is just shy from forking over that extra premium money for a Hot Toys. If you can definitely not afford any of the old school Hot Toys or even the upcoming 2.0 revamp of the BBS Ben Affleck Batman from Hot Toys, this is probably going to be your next best bet if you want something that's a bit more on the budget friendly side. Sure, we probably would have liked the sniper rifle or the kryptonite grenade gun, etc. Or even the branding iron that he uses for his victims or his the criminals. That all really would have been appreciated, but at least it's good to see that whatever we lost there in accessories, they made sure to really nail in sculpting, detail, and quality. And frankly, if this is what they're able to do with proper licensing for my very first Fondoy figure, I am pleasantly surprised. And I'm definitely signed up to see what is coming down the pipeline. Specifically, if those leaks are to be believed, and we're going to be getting not only a Justice League and a Nightmare Batfleck Batman, but also a Robert Pattinson Batman. You also got the Flash in there, and God knows what else they could possibly do with proper licensing by Warner Brothers and DC. Maybe they can revisit that Heath Ledger Joker, or that Christian Bale Batman, or even that Henry Cavill Superman. I don't know. It, the sky's the limit, but it, as long as they take their time and they don't rush things like it looks like Mafex did, and it looks like the ship has sailed with McFarlane. So right now, I would argue that your best bet is probably going to be Fun Joy. It gets my seal of approval, and I give this guy a very, 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 very strong 8 out of 10. It's damn near a 9. If it wasn't for, like I said, the slight inaccuracies and disproportioning of the torso, a little bit extra detail on the neck to make it look a bit more humanoid as opposed to the Neanderthal-looking aesthetic to the head sculpt. But then you also got the difficulty of swapping out the hand accessories and also the futzing of the cape i think it's a little bit too long but once you kind of remove all those things this is such a solid first entry into my collection from Fonjoy. who knows we might just have a legitimate worthwhile competitor to mcfarland sure it's a little bit of extra money but when it comes to the big guys the big kahunas like mcfarland mafex figure arts Fonjoy might be a name to look after so now the discussion that i want to have is pretty simple Fonjoy. Is this Ben Affleck Batman worthy enough to get you into picking up figures from them or at least looking into the company? Or do you think that this could potentially be simply just a first time fluke and you're going to need a little bit more to really get have them be in your good graces and start actually investing into the company from a collector's point of view? I look forward to seeing what some of you guys have to say in the comment section while you're down there. If you enjoyed this review slash comparison, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down. And as always, stay humble. I'll see you guys later.